Hello VJ fam, Tbot back with another exciting tutorial. This time about my intensity generator version 1.1, which is about to be released to Juice Bar within the next couple days. Um, this is a revision over the first version, which adds a couple exciting things, including the ability to set your strobes based on envelope. Uh, I did remove a couple parameters and you can see all of the changes that happened in the change log, which is released uh, with the plugin. Uh, if you are interested in this, please definitely check out my other plugins as well, my feedback machine, my uh, Better Edge plugin, as well as my soon to be released Master Mod plugin, uh, which helps uh, really, really greatly on pretty much any piece of content to bring all of the brightness, contrast, and adjustment uh, parameters into one easy drag and drop so that you don't have to drag six different things onto a piece of content in order to get the look that you want. Now in this tutorial, I'm just going to be kind of running through a real brief rundown on what this is. Try to keep it short. I don't want to keep this one. Uh, I want to keep this one under under 10 or 15 minutes, ideally, no more 45 minutes or an hour. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move forward and uh, let's dive into this. Just want to start off by saying that just like my other plugins, the intensity generator is designed to work with my other patches. Um, you can use this stacked with the feedback machine or with my Better Edge plugin or with my master mod, which will soon be released as well, in order to create more complex and more defined looks uh, across the board. Uh, I do want to start by just also saying that with the intensity generator and our test piece of content here, that I have randomized the timeline and set a couple parameters on that in order to get our character jumping around and randomizing around a little bit here. Obviously, this helps with the intensity look, but you can definitely do this uh, without this. So without with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this. Now, obviously, like the name says, the intensity generator is designed to create intensity, um, either small amounts or large amounts. It's completely flexible and it's up to you. So let's go ahead and clear out this uh, glitch look here from my uh, EBR logo. And uh, let's go ahead and dive into what some of these things could do. At its most basic level, uh, you'll see the list of parameters here. We'll kind of kind of briefly run through what's here. Um, from the top down, you have the opacity of the entire uh, intensity generator. You have your strobe opacity. You have your strobe color. You will notice that even setting a strobe color will not do anything until this playback is set. What this playback essentially is currently is just your strobe opacity, right? And so if you come to the little gear icon to the left here, you can set this to either timeline or BPM sync. And it literally says it right in the name of the parameter that you want to set this to some sort of parameter um, to, to timeline or BPM so that you can set, say, 128 BPM and then knock this down to one beat. And now you have a strobe coming in at one beat at 128 BPM. Um, obviously, you can increase the speed from there in order to get uh, more defined looks at that BPM. Additionally, uh, you can also now set this to an envelope. Um, so things like the secondary point can be set to uh, maybe an elastic of some sort, right? So you get these kind of different strobe effects. And it makes anything with an envelope possible. Um, not saying that it's perfect yet, but definitely better than what we had in place before, which was just a saw with a frequency and an amplitude adjustment. So this should give you much, much more flexibility when it comes down to it. And of course, you can set all of your different strobe looks accordingly. Now, additionally, um, in this case, I'll just set this on a timeline and we'll just keep this guy simple for now. In the interest of science, uh, maybe an, an exponential in, something like this. Right, and there we go. Uh, what's cool about this intensity generator, other than the fact that it can obviously generate strobes, is that it's also creating alpha on the background layer of this clip. So you are able to adjust a background color. Uh, maybe you want it to be a bright red, not that I like Christmas or anything. And you can set the background color, which will go behind the subject. Um, this is cool for creating complex color palette looks for strobes and other things and whatever else. Uh, in this case, we'll just go ahead and keep this one black and we'll go ahead and keep the strobe black too. Um, let's go ahead and cut down the, the speed on it so that it's strobing a little bit faster. And uh, let's go ahead and move down to see what these other things do. Now, just like my other plugin uh, or other plugins, uh, this essentially is working in a similar fashion where you're starting with a single clip 
and it is splitting it out into multiple layers within the wire plugin. In this case, it's splitting it into two layers rather than three, like my feedback machine. And uh, you only have a top layer and a bottom layer, Let's see, bottom layer and a top layer uh, to mess with parameter wise. By default, the top opacity is all the way up. The zoom is at 1.1, and then this is to compensate for any kind of uh, any kind of shake effects. Most of the default ones will shake the frame out of place a little bit if it's not zoomed in a little bit. So that zoom is there to help you compensate. Um, if you wanted to mix between these two layers, that's essentially what this fader right here is. This this parameter is your A B adjustment between that top layer and that bottom layer. So doing things like placing the top and bottom master on a BPM sync or a timeline is going to snap back and forth between these top and bottom layers, right? So you can now also have a blend mode between those two. For example, a displace will give you a BPM place displace between those two layers. Quite powerful, really nice. Um, and of course it works perfectly with your uh, defaulted BPM here, as well as setting it manually here. Um, if we come down, you'll see some of the things that you can do to that top versus that bottom layer. Uh, for example, you can shift it on the X uh, or the Y. Um, and again, these parameters are the same for the top and the bottom. So I'll, I'll cover the top and it'll be pretty much the same for the bottom. And then I'll show you what this thing could do. Um, shifting just allows you to shift like the main frame on the X or the Y. Uh, you've got your hue scale, which allows you to, uh, to set everything to a desaturation if you want. Um, you know, you can, uh, as well as the top hue and the actual saturation. So you have the ability to kind of uh, set how hard you want that hue change to be, as well as the scaling of it and whether you want the, the whole thing to be saturated at all. So you can make everything black and white, grayscale, which, which, what have you. Um, you also have the ability to invert the top versus the bottom. And as you can see, we are moving between those top and bottom layers right now. So when I change the top layer, we now have a white background as well appearing there. So there are a couple different ways to create strobes within this, um, whether it be at the content level or whether it be by using the actual strobe color. And you can also uh, invert uh, the uh, red, the green, or the blue um, to create more color control. Um, and you can also colorize uh, everything after that in order to create uh, you know, one of the two layers, a red version or whatever color you want. You also have the uh, the ability to uh, mess with the contrast of that colorize as well as invert that colorize to create um, the background color or something else as well. You have the auto mask control, which will allow you to invert your auto masks. In this case, that won't help, but certain types of content that may be beneficial. And then this is where you kind of get into the movement uh, periods of things here. So first one here you'll see is amplitude. And if we go ahead and we just kind of pause this again for a second, make this basic again. Right, we just go back to the top layer, which is the one that we're working on, right? So I've moved this all the way to the left and we're on the top layer, all the way to the right to the bottom layer. So in this case, the top layer, we have a colorize and we can adjust how, con how contrasted that colorize is. In this case, a 0.1, if you go all the way up, you're going to lose definition within the, within the subject. Um, you also have the ability to adjust the top amplitude, which is the left and right shake on the X. And you can get this really high or you can get this really low and you can also adjust the frequency and aka the speed of it so you can tie this into bpm or you can tie this into just how it visually looks okay to you and create movement left and right on the x with that you have the ability to do it on the y as well um, obviously i don't use the y as much as i use the x um, but it is there as well in case you need it you have something called a shake which will shake the clip on the left and right on kind of on a diagonal axis i mean you have the ability to adjust the shake size how far it's going left to right and how fast it's going right so you can get a really 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 intense shake like this um turning that back off you now have something that i called chaos chaos is just much more tight like in, it's intense tight shake um this allows you between this and this to create various different looks for those shakes Again, you also have it for the Y, but it's not something that I use as often. But small combinations of the X and Y can create diagonal patterns. So if that's what you're aiming to do, then so be it. Uh, you also have the ability to RGB shift, which with this colorization is not going to show us anything. But if I show the, the RGB shift and I offset the red, you'll see that the red comes off of the clip a little bit. Um, you can also do a Y offset of that red. Um, 
And you can also adjust the amplitude of just the red, the green, or the blue. So you can split out that color channel and create a shake behind the original subject that gives you that intensity that you're looking for. You also have it for the Y. Um, again, don't use the Y that often. And if we do it with the other colors, you'll see that you can split the green off to one side, have it go all the way off to the side here on the X or the Y, and you can adjust the amplitude of the green separately if you so desire. Um, coming down further, uh, you have the same thing for the blue. Um, same, basically all of these parameters from here to here are all going to be covering that RGB shift and amplitude. And finally, underneath, you have a shadow, which in the case of the top layer sometimes won't work unless you have an alpha baked into the original clip. So in this case, I will need to add an auto mask before everything else uh, in order to show the top shadow. So if I come in here and I've now set that and I come back to my intensity generator and I turn the shadow back on, you will now see the shadow showing up because the original clip is being displayed with alpha, which means that the top will show a shadow. So just keep that in mind. That's kind of one caveat of the usage of this thing. This parameter will not work unless there is alpha in the clip. Now it's the same thing for the bottom layer. Um, you can set different colorizations, right? Um, I can set that to any color I wish. Uh, and I can come in and say that I want to now go between those two layers. So if I come back and I go to the top bottom master and I BPM sync it, you'll see that we are now going between the red and the green uh, in this case. Now I personally like to bounce it back and forth and then cut the beats in half rather than having it go and snap, but that's totally up to you. In this case, we don't necessarily need uh, a blend type of a displace, but an alpha could work as well. Um, you can already see how this is creating more intensity on a clip. Um, and this is obviously not a great example because I don't like red and green. So let's go ahead and change these colors up a little bit here. So I'll make this top shadow uh, more of a white color, I guess. Uh, and then this bottom colorize, we can make this a different color as well. Maybe make this a black or like whatever we wish. In this case, I'll do a white. Um, and we can set the amplitude of these two different things in two different directions if we wish. Um, again, I can also set it with bottom shadow color as well. And that bottom shadow can be whatever we wish it to be. Um, and we can offset it and create whatever we want from there. Uh, that's pretty much covering the usage case of this. Uh, it's able to do tons and tons and tons of stuff depending on the original clip that you place it on. Um, and in addition, uh, I did want to show uh, one variation of something that I did here. So this intensity generator, as you'll see, I've tightened up the strobe playback to be very tight. Um, all this is doing is ever so slightly adjusting the background brightness so that when I drop in a feedback generator, uh, it makes the feedback disappear in the background. Um, the intensity generator and the feedback machine work very, very well together. Um, as you can see, here's the one that we just created with the feedback machine in the background. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can use my plugins all stacked on top of one another in order to achieve amazing things. Um, this kind of gives you the basic idea of what this thing can do. Again, the main concept, just as a review here, um, you're going to, when you drop this thing on, it splits everything into two layers, um, a top layer and a bottom layer, which basically you have an AB control that goes between the two. Uh, and you can set the shakes and the everything between those two layers in order to dial in exactly the intensity level that you want and the color palettes that you want and everything else. So hopefully this was uh, an, a good explainer for you. Um, Hopefully this was adequate, uh, and I will be making another tutorial very soon about my master mod plugin, which will be released very soon on JuiceBar. Uh, this one is going to be just a little bit of a freebie or a very cheap release uh, for the community in order to get better results from my other plugins. So with that, I wish you guys a wonderful day or night wherever you are. Happy BJing, and I'll see you guys next time.